check this out. Wouldn't it be real nice if you were able to control your blinds by just using the app? And let's say you wanted to close it just a little bit. You see that? Or better yet, hey Google, close office blinds. Okay, closing the office blinds. Wouldn't that be pretty awesome if you can just do that versus going around every single day, twisting and turning your blinds just to open them? Well, stay tuned as I do an unboxing and setup for this product. And I'll be talking more about it right after this. Now, before I get started, if you find that my content is interesting or you end up liking it, please make sure you go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you want to continue to receive content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel by hitting that subscribe and that notification bell button. Now we can always stay informed whenever I post new content on my channel. All right, as you can see here, a very straight to the point presentation on the external packaging. All right, nothing there, nothing on either side, just the logo on the front. All right, so with that stated, let's go ahead and open up this bad boy. All right, so we're just gonna slide this open here. And right away, you're presented with the wand, all right? slide this out of the sleeve maybe it's this way yeah all right so here you have it let's put this down some information here regarding the uh, contact information for the company and then it's a quick start guide all right put that to the side and then if you go inside here it's probably easier to Lift this up, you can slide over or remove the first phone and you have your adapters, which I'll talk about later. You should have three in there. All right, one is a right angle, the other one is a left angle. And then this is for your, uh, if you have vertical blinds. Mine has the hook and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about later. But you do have the other two pieces just in case you don't have the hook set up. You can take this off and then put the one that's appropriate for you. All right. And then here, these last two slots, you have four AA batteries. All right, which are energizers, as you can see. But if you do opt in for the solar adapter, then all you would need, of course, is this, and then the rechargeable batteries that come with the package, all right? Versus using just the AA batteries, you have to change these you know, quite often, and it's not rechargeable, all right? So with this setup, you're pretty much gonna set and forget it. All right, so it's definitely a good welcome addition. All right, and as you can see, it has a suction cup, so it will just stick onto your window. And then this part here, we'll just plug into the wand right there. All right, pretty easy. Now, again, with these adapters, if you have a vertical blind setup, then this is where this will come handy, all right? But I have horizontal blinds, so we're not gonna need this. All right, so the way this works, this hole right here, this, again, this is where you will plug in your um, solar adapter, or if you have a, a uh, charge uh, cord, you could plug in here as well. But 
uh, what you would do is make sure this is facing away from the window. All right. And then these two circles here, one and two, let me get a little closer so you can see it. Both of these should be facing towards the window. Those are sensors. So that's how you know you're having it facing the correct way. If the sensors are facing towards the window and then you have this facing away from the window. Now, when I mount this, when I get this set up, this arm is facing towards the left side. All right. And that's when this adapter will come in play. As you can see here, because you want the adapter that's facing that's closest to it when it's mounted. All right. Of course, you wouldn't use this one because it's too far away and it would not work. If you wanted to use this one or if you wanted this arm to be on the right side, there's a screw here. You would take out that screw and then you will pop this off and then there'll be two screws here at the bottom. You would just take those screws out. Then you would just take this off, turn it around so that way the arm is facing towards the right. Put the two screws back in there, pop this back on and then put that screw back in and then this will be facing this way. Now, of course, you can't just turn it around manually just like this because then the two sensors will be facing away from the window. So again, you have to remove this, turn everything around, and then again, make sure that those two sensors are facing towards the window. It's very, very important. And again, this will be facing away from the window. Now, if your setup is different, in which I will show you what I'm talking about, again, if you have uh, if you don't have the hook or the hole where you will hook this into, then you can use again, one of these two here. You can use one of these two. All right. And all you would do if you need to replace it or switch it out, just take out that screw again, pop this off and then choose the one that you need and then screw it back in there. That's it. So it'll be one screw for this one. Just take this off and then add the one that you need and screw it back in and you're good to go. With that stated, let's head towards the window so we can get this installed. All right, now, so what I'm gonna do, this is the bottom, of course, this is the top, as you can see here. All right, but what I do, and I know some people may not agree with this, they may agree to install the batteries last. I'm not going to install the batteries last because it's gonna be hanging up like this and it's kind of a pain when you unscrew this. So to remove the bottom, first of all, let me emphasize on that. All right, so you would just simply uh, unscrew. I think the older model, you had to kind of pop it off, but here you just twist, unscrew, and then you'll see the bottom, right? And then drop the batteries in there, the rechargeable batteries. Now if it's hanging up upside down, which I've done before, because I forgot to put the batteries, you gotta put one in there, hold it. Put the other one in there, hold it. All the way in, and then kind of screw it in that way. And then it's not worth it. So what I do is I put the batteries in there. Now I don't twist it all the way to the top because once you put the batteries in and you twist this all the way to the top, it's activated to be uh, it's ready to be paired and set up and it times out after a while. So instead of having this all the way up, you know, I put it in probably like around there, twist it about three or four times. So it's not activating the wand. And then once I have this all installed and ready to go, I just complete it by twisting it all the way up and then go ahead and set it up. All right. So um, I'm going to get the batteries out the way. And let's do that right now. All right, so here we go. Just drop those in there one by one. Just like so, of course, this part is at the bottom. This part is at the top. Or you can say the positive is at the top. Negative is at the bottom. All right, so positive goes in head first. Just like that. And then as I say, this is what I do. Just twist this in there. Give it a few turns. Okay, let's see here. There we go. Maybe 
one, two, three. So you can see it's not coming out. All right, so that's ready to go. And all right, so we got the batteries out the way. Now, before you even start the install, I definitely recommend you open your blinds up to where it's 50% open, meaning that everything is flat. The reason why I will show you later on, it probably makes more sense for me to show you why later on, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this opened up using the, uh, the original wine that's on there. And then after doing so, then I can remove that wine. Again, it's recommended for me to have this Again, in my opinion, to have this open up to about 50% where everything is leveled up and then you can remove your old wand. All right, so let's go ahead and get this open. All right, I wanted to get a little closer so you can see it. Again, as you can see, I have the hook set up here and I just need to go ahead and get that removed. Again, your setup may be different. You may not have this hook. All right, yours may not be set up like that. You may have something different. And that's the case again, you will use those other two options that I showed you earlier. All right, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and get this taken off and then I'm gonna add the new one. All right, so again, this is the old one. And it's getting replaced by this one here. All right, I'm gonna do a size comparison. You can see that this is much thicker, obviously, because of the battery and etc. Uh, but the length, put these around the same height, right there. You can see that the original one is much longer. All right, so pretty cool. This one is much heavier. And again, this is aluminum and this is plastic. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this hung up and then move on from there. Now, for some reason, if it's not lined up, like, you know, the arm is facing this way, um, this may not be the right way to do it, but I just twist it a little bit just so this is facing straight towards the left, I mean, towards the right and the arm is facing this way, so it lines up. So when I hang it up there, it's a lot easier, all right? So I'm hoping when I twist it like that, I don't spoil the motor. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get this hung up. All right, as you can see, I have it on there. I'll get a little closer so you can see it better. All right, I have it on there. I didn't have to remove the valance. Sometimes you may, depending on your situation, but I did not. Again, you can see it's on there. And the reason why I say open the blinds too, and again, I'll show you my other reason. The first reason is once you have it on here, if you try to twist it, it can be quite difficult um, if you're manually trying to twist this on here. So it's better to do it ahead of time. And then once that's done, you should be good to go. And now that I have that installed, I'm gonna go ahead and install the solar adapter, which is quite easy. Now for me, what I do is I go to the sink, wet my fingertip, and then put water on here. Same thing on this side, put water on here. That way it can stick to the window a lot easier. And then after it dries, you get more of a solid suction. Also keep in mind, if your window is you know, dirty or has debris or dust on it, you may want to clean that area first before, you know, doing what I just mentioned, wetting this because that's not going to allow it to stick for a long time. So you may want to clean that area. You don't need any Windex or anything like that. You can probably just get some water, paper towel, just splash a little bit of water on there and then wipe it dry with paper towel or a microfiber or cloth or what have you. And then once that's done, I prefer paper towel. If, if you use paper towel, it, it, it should dry it up nice and clean and um, get rid of all the dust and stuff. And then once you do that, go ahead and wet these areas. Again, you just need a little bit of water. Wipe it on there, wipe it on there. Try not to get water like I did on the actual solar panel. All right, but that's just a splash so that can come right off. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up on the window and then go from there. All right, as you can see, I do have that installed. All right, 
right on the window. Very easy, stick it on there. And now I'm going to take this end here and plug it into the wand. All right, plug it right here in that hole, like I mentioned before. All right, get a better focus there and just stick it right in there. Boom. There you have it. Now, as far as the cord, you can tuck it away in the back so it's not just sticking out and looking tacky. And then it gives it more of a clean look and you can also tie it because you're not gonna need the full length of it anyway, but it's really up to you. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. That's installed. Um, last thing I need to do is go ahead and add the adapter. And then once I have the adapter added, twist this tight. So that way this is activated and ready for the app. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of alcohol to pour on this microfiber cloth and then wipe down the area where I'm going to stick the adapter that's going to connect to or attach to the arm of the wand, all right? And you have the three of them adhesive right here. Okay, so just to wipe the area so that way it can stick nice and clean and not have any issues in case there's debris or dust on that area. Again, just a little bit of alcohol. All right, so just a little bit here, pour it right there. That's enough. And then I'm just gonna wipe that area. Now, before I wipe it, for me, I know exactly where I'm gonna put it, but for you, you may want to do this first, is to actually put this up here. All right. And then on the outer right side, you're gonna get a pencil, maybe mark it. So that way you know exactly where to put it. And then you can get your alcohol and wipe that area. The whole entire area where this is going to stick to. But as you can see here, I'm just wiping the area. So it sticks nice and clean on there. Point this out. You know, some of the older, probably most of the older uh, horizontal blinds, where this would stick, it's a lot flatter and more area for it to stick. I have a cordless um, system where it's, you don't need to pull the cord to uh, raise the blinds. You just have to lift it. And so the area that I have to stick is just a small little area right here. So essentially it's only like half let me get it closer. So it's only like half of the adapter that's going to actually stick and the other half is going to be out and free. It still works for me. So just keep that in mind. If you have a setup like I do, then you're only going to possibly have just half of this sticking to this area here and the other half is going to be free and out. Now removing this 3M, uh, zoom in better there. Now, I thought I had this part on film, pretty bummed I didn't, but if you're struggling to get this off, cause it's on there pretty good. Get a better focus again. All right. So this is on there pretty good, right? If you're struggling, then you can get like a knife or something sharp. And then you're gonna go in, not deep, but like the surface layer, probably aim for the corner, and then try to lift the corner of this up, just enough so you can grab it with your nail or with your finger and then peel it off. All right, so again, it's gonna be more like the surface layer, not deep, just to peel that off, because sometimes that could be on there pretty tight. So I'll show you this again. Uh, for example, you know, if you're not able to Get that corner to pick it up. And, you know, so you're able to peel off uh, this 3M layer so that way the adhesive is ready to go. You can always get a knife or something sharp. You don't want to go too deep. You just want to get to that uh, surface layer, right? So you can go over here and just kind of get closer. 
not too deep, but just enough so it kind of pokes that layer and then lift it up. So once you're able to get a piece of it there, then you should be able to peel the rest off just like that. All right. Again, that's if you're struggling with peeling off this layer for your adapter. All right, but it's time to go ahead and get this added on there. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. As you can see, the adapter is up there. And the last thing to do to complete this installation is to stick this piece right in there. Now, when you when this is in there, you don't want the arm to be resting towards the left or towards the right or the back or the front. You want it to be nice and level just like that. All right, so that's very important or you could suffer later on. It's happened to me. I learned the hard way. But once you have that set up like this where it's right in the middle, kind of neutral, push it together so it snaps in place and then you're complete. All right, that's the setup. Nice and complete. Next thing to do is to go ahead and twist this here tighter and then go ahead and open up the app. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the app. Samsung. Get that opened. Tap on the plus sign to add a device or add a wand. Now, if you want to go through the tutorial or the guides, you can. I don't need to, so I'm going to go ahead and tap on skip. And as you can see here, it wants to connect via Bluetooth. And that's what I meant by the timeout. If you were to put the batteries in ahead of time and twist it all the way to the top, eventually it would time out. And if that does time out, if it happens to you, all you need to do is unscrew the bottom, let the batteries come down a little bit, hold there for maybe about 10 seconds, and then go ahead and push them back in and screw it back up. But let's go ahead and move forward. Tap next. Success, Bluetooth has been allowed. Next. Let's wait for this to find a wand. Okay. Now, if you see this, I'm glad this happened. If this happens, if you try it again and it does it again, all you need to do again is to remove the battery and put it back in there. And then that should do it. But you can try a few times to see if it finds it just like it did now. I'm going to go ahead and tap here. And then you look for your Wi-Fi. It only works on 2.4 gigahertz. So you connect it to Wi-Fi, put your password in and then move forward. Tap next, and then you should see the screen here. Give it a few moments for it to connect. And I'm glad this happened as well. If you see this, let's go ahead and try it again. Let's tap try again. Sometimes there's interference that causes these issues. Now, for some reason, if you see this twice, then what you would do is go ahead and uh, pull the battery from the wand, give it 10 seconds, put the batteries back in. Of course, it's mounted already, so you know it, you don't have to let the batteries come all the way down. You just need to unscrew it and hold it there. Like, just let it drop a little bit, hold it there in place, and then give it 10 seconds and then screw it back in there and then just set it up again. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap cancel. Tap cancel, yes, cancel. Then I'm going to try again. All right, so this is what I was referring to. You can untwist it, let it sit there for like 10 seconds, and then just twist it back in. You don't have to let all the batteries come out. It's kind of a waste of time. So just enough where the contacts are not all together and this is not powered up. And then go ahead and give it a test again. All right, let's go ahead and try this again. Again, I'm going to skip this. Tap next. Tap next. All right, so there you have that. 
All right, just connect it to Wi-Fi. Let's wait for it. All right, as you can see, it said it has successfully connected. Tap next. You can name it what you want. All right, depending on the location it is or what have you. All right. I'm gonna name this, let's just name this office. All right. And then depending on your setup, again, you have vertical, mini, or just your standard horizontal. That's what I have. Tap save. All right, now it's time for calibration. All right, let's go ahead and tap calibration or we'll start calibration. And you're gonna see why I said it's good to start off with the blinds all the way open. You're gonna save a step. As you can see here, you're saving a step because it wants you to, that said they were closed all the way, you have to use the button to constantly uh, make sure it's fully opened. Actually, it's gonna be, I think it's this one here, uh, to open it up so that way it's fully open or halfway as, you, as I have it here already, as you can see. But since I already have it set up that way, before I remove the original wand, I can say it's fully opened, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and tap fully opened. Okay, now it wants me to close it upward. So let's do that. Okay, so you have to go through this process. In fact, I can let you see the wand spinning itself just a moment here. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. All right, you can look at the wand as I push the button, and then of course the blinds too. All right, pretty cool. One more should do it. Now make sure, this is another key point, you want to make sure you don't close it too much. As you can see, that's the last level before closing fully. If you do it again, it can pull the adapter off. Are the blinds fully closed? Yes, they are. You tap that. And as you can see, it's opening. All right. And it asks, did the blinds fully open? Yes. So now it's time to close them downward. So I'm gonna push that button and push it again. Just keep pushing it. Same thing with this one. You don't want to, you want to make sure that you push it until you know it's actually fully closed, not past that level. Because you will regret it later. I think I have room for one more. That's it. All right. Are they closed? Yes. And as you can see, pretty simple setup. And it asks, did they fully open? Yes. And that's gonna go through the process. The calibration is complete. Your wand is ready to be used. So I'm gonna go ahead and attempt done. Done again, and that's it. So what I did is, I went to the app, I went to this one here, which is the one we just set up, right? And if I, well, with here, let's just talk about this. That showing is in the middle, that it's fully opened. You can either close all the way up, close all the way down, and it's gonna automatically do it, or you can adjust the percentage. That's how I want it 40% closed down. you know, or if I want it, I don't know, 30% up. All right, pretty cool. Or again, you can close all the way up instead of worrying about percentages or close it all the way down. 
or you can open and it opens all the way up to where it was before, which is fully open as you can see there. All right. Now, the other thing you want to do once you have this set up is tap over here and then you can see the battery life is 40%, but it is charging. Now it is a slow charge, which I don't mind because it's not being used all the time. So it takes a bit of time for it to get, of course, 100% or uh, you're not putting too much charge to the battery to kill the battery life of those lithium rechargeable batteries. You know what I mean? So it doesn't require a lot of power to operate, but it's, it's charging daily. So um, that's pretty cool. But as you can see here, there's an option. Where is it at? Did I pass it? Uh, you can always recalibrate if for some reason it's not functioning correctly. You can go there and recalibrate it. Uh, but I'm looking for, okay, double tap. Add that disabled. Now with double tap, what you could do with that is if you double tap the wand, it will open or close, you know what I mean? So if, if it's open already, you double tap it, it's going to go in the motion of either closing or opening. And the reason why you want that is because, or the, the, almost, let me, not, let me not say you want it, but a good uh, reason why you may want it is because if there's no internet, you can manually open your blinds by just double tapping or manually close it by double tapping. But if you were to do that, it's going to require a recalibration. All right. So, you know, I just set it up without doing it. But if I wanted to go back and do it, then I have to recalibrate the blinds again. But just keep that in mind that if you want to use double tap and if you already have your blind set up, you will have to go ahead and recalibrate it. But what you want to do is actually update it. So let me go back again so you can see it where it says firmware version. That's the older firmware. So you're going to tap here. Tap update. Now let it do its thing. And as it says here, it could take a few minutes. Every so often, you come back here and check. And when it's done, you know, maybe check after two minutes and you tap check status, it will say it's done. Now, at the time of me doing this, there are two firmware updates available. So after I do this one, there's gonna be one more. Then I should be up to date. All right, let's check it again. That's completed. All right, so the firmware version should be different, as you can see there. But I'm going to tap that one more time. New firmware version is available again. So let that do its thing. All right, so let's go on through the process of pulling down that firmware update. Sometimes, I notice with this one, it takes a little longer. I think this one is a larger update. But once it gets to that screen, that means it's installing the update. And I, you know, the next screen where it tells you, or gives you the option to check the status. But as you can see here, it's taking a little while. Now, sometimes when it takes too long, that means for some reason out of crash or it timed out and you could tap cancel um, and then try it again. So it looks like on my end here, it's probably timed out. It may have been an interference or so. Um, so what I'm going to do is tap cancel and cancel again, go out of the app, go back in, come over here. Um, and then come back here. Let's go ahead and try this update again. All right, there we have it. Let's give that a few minutes. Every so often, like I said, maybe about two minutes, come back here and tap check the status. And then, you know, it, it'll let you know if it's done or not. Now I have done this before, right? And check the status and it told me no update available or it gives you an error saying you have to try again. Hopefully that's not what's gonna happen here. Um, but we will see. All right, as you can see here, it's completed. 
after I hit check status, it showed me this. Now, if I were to go back here, you can see the firmware version is different and it's current. All right, uh, there's a few more options here. There's a power saving mode. There's a connection disconnect fix. If you click that or tap that, as you can see here, you know, it's for wands or if you have a situation where you're having a lot of disconnects or uh, I guess no responses, then you can enable this. And you enable it by, you see that where it says no over here? You'll tap down a little arrow, choose yes, and then hit save. All right. And then that can help with your connection issues. It says with the errors or motor roller um, routers or modems, um, but it's probably other ones out there as well. But you do have that option. All right, let's get out of here. Um, it gives you the temperature outside. Uh, what else here? Again, if you want to rename it, you just go here and you can rename it what you want to. Um, you could reverse the direction. Okay. Uh, but for the most part, that's it. Get out of here. Get out of here. Um, I'm going to go to groups, office. So you can create your group by just tapping the plus button there. Name what you want, hit save, and then you're able to add your blinds you know, whichever ones you want in your group. Like I have this one here. Okay. Um, I'm going to go here to settings. I already have this created. If I wanted to add more, tap over here. And then let's say go down to office two Hit save. Now the reason why I have them named, you know, let's say living room one or living room two, it's because if you wanted to have maybe that one particular blind closed or open, you can just call out that particular blind. But if you want all of them, right? I say you want all the blind. Ooh, well, that's an example there. So if I wanted the entire office closed, I can do that. And as you can see, one and two are closed. All right, no problems there. So I want to open them. I'm opening them, I'm opening them as a group. All right, and there you have it. So let's say again, let me back out. If it's only a particular one, let's say I want it only office one, I can just control that one. Let's say I didn't want, maybe the sun is aiming at that particular blind too much and I can reduce that down to 40% or whatever. Let's say I want it the office one to be maybe closed a little bit lower because the sun is coming through that one too hard, then I can maybe drop that down to, I don't know, 20 or 30% and leave the other one open, fully opened or however I want. So you have that flexibility. But let's say I wanted to control both of them together, then that's when I can go to the groups and then they all work as one. You know what I mean? Um, now with the schedules, you can create different schedules, of course. Uh, you just go here, tap the plus button, set your time, and then kind of go through the motions, right? You know, depend on your time zone. Then you can choose the day of the week. Let's say, you know, if I want it all days or just one day. And then you can choose the percentage of that particular group of blinds you want it to be. You know, 50% open, all the way open, etc. Hit save, uh, choose which blinds you want to be or to go with that schedule. And then uh, after you do that, hit save. And then you're going to want to, which is the last step is to tap active. All right, and that activates it. And that's pretty much it. So if you want all of them to open in the morning or whatnot, you would just choose all your blinds for devices. You know, you'll choose them all. And then if you want, them to close at a certain time, then you could choose again, you create that group, maybe choose all of your um, 
lines again and then change, select the time, maybe 8 p.m. or whatnot, for them all to close or 8.50 or whatnot p.m. for them all to close together. Um, you can have different groups like I do or different schedules. Let me delete this one because I don't need it. Uh, you can have different schedules like I do. Like I have some blinds that open up 60%, some blinds that open up at uh, 30%. So you can spread it out. So when they open, they're not all opening at the same level. So that's what's nice about the schedule. Now there is a way you can link it up. As um, Adam, the CEO of Sunsa, he mentioned that you can have it linked to your uh, Google Assistant. I think Amazon has that option as well where you're able to um, set it for sundown and sun up, um, sunrise and sundown, um, you know, with the commands or with the uh, routines. I haven't really messed with that yet, but you do have the option there. But that's pretty much this in a nutshell. Pretty cool features. It feels nice to be able to wake up in the morning, my blinds are open, and then at night when it's getting dark, the blinds close. I don't have to go there one by one twisting them and untwisting them day in and day out. You know, that is pretty nice. And if you have a tall ceiling where you have those higher up blinds where you're not able to reach, you can now have those open and close as well, you know, uh, so you can bring in more natural light into your house and then close them at night. So pretty cool features, very, very reliable, very handy. And uh, again, it's nice that it works with your uh, Google Assistant and um, Amazon um, you know who, I don't want to activate your guys, uh, um, smart devices, but, but for all in all, I definitely think it's worth it. And I definitely think that this is the way of the future. Now, what do you all think about the Sunsa One? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's the way to the future? Do you think it's convenient? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, let me know what you think about this. Now, if you're interested, of course, again, a link will be posted in the description section of this video. And this completes my unboxing and setup for the sensor wand and the solar adapter. I thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please show your support by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Also, share it out and comment below. Until next time, keep it mobile.